You got the sweater on, eh? That's all, all I wear. It comes Fine. off a little quicker Fine. now. Fine. We're just at our leanest point yet in the prep and you're wearing a sweater, but. <laughs> How far out are you exactly? Two weeks, three days, four days. Two weeks, four days. Four days. Whatever right. it is to Saturday. Are you still pushing good weight? Um, I dropped that like down to 62. But then I bumped back up to 65 and it's going down 64. <laughs> no, no, I mean like in the gym. Are you still pushing It's good going weight? down. That's why I need to do this push day so bad. Okay. I have a lot of elbow pain going on right now. It's Will been... this make it worse? Huh? Will this make it worse? I don't know. It's it's like there, but it's like it's I doable. can still do it. Okay. Yeah. It as doesn't long interfere as, with my weight. As long as you're still able to move weight decently, we should be okay. So we're starting off with an incline hammer strength press. Now, as you guys know, I like to take a bit of a higher hand placement when I do this. That does not mean you have to do it. That does not mean it's optimal. It's just my preferred way of doing it. Do you typically take like a bit of a lower or do you take a higher? It varies. Okay. Well, on how we'll like get... loose I feel those days. Have you used this machine yet? Once. Okay. Well, we'll figure out what your best place is for it. But. Yep. Oh. There we go. Come on. Uh, now, in case I haven't explained it before, the reason I do like to get a partner assist on this machine a little bit rather than just getting straight to failure is because the leverages are so different in the bottom versus going up because it swings its way upwards that I don't feel, if it was a straight path, then I would just go straight to my own failure, maybe a couple partials. But because of the fact that it swings upwards, it changes kind of the emphasis of the movement and you're not nearly as strong at this part. If it could like loosen up on the top, that would be perfect, but it does. But let's get you warmed up. But right now, you're pushing almost entirely with your triceps. And this is just a really awkward position. So you either gotta take and drop it down and then push from here like, or, what I prefer to do, and I really don't like this machine doing this, like a lot of people do, but I don't, is you drop down really low, minimize tricep involvement by taking a bit wider placement, and then you can push from here and your upper chest gets almost all the stimulus. That's, that's what I personally like doing. I want you to try it out, because I feel like okay. right now you're just doing a lot of tricep work. Okay. And you're I'll probably be really weak right there then. Uh, you'd be surprised. You might actually be like a little bit stronger. We'll see. Let's get uh, the 45 is back on. Here you go. Now you're moving the weight properly. Good. 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 Back down. Back down. And let go. Good. Yeah, I felt a lot better. Yeah. And I was like a lot stronger it, than I was. It makes a huge difference. Like I went from trying to do everything with it tucked and like not really feeling because my I like the same as you, like my triceps just take over these movements. Yeah. To doing it like this. And I was like, oh, that's what the chest is supposed to feel like. That felt a lot better. Yeah. I think tricep dominant pushers. And we'll do, like, we'll do better like that. My elbow was like tweaking a little bit the first time. Yep. I didn't even have like these up or anything and it was just, so it, it felt tremendously I, better. I, I don't know. I think there's too many people that are too set that it has to be done in the other way that they don't even give themselves a chance. They're like, why are my elbows hurt? Why are my, why is my chest not growing? Why is my triceps taking over? Gotta think about this for a second. You can adjust the bench if you want to raise it at all. I think like right here. Oh, I see what you're saying. I didn't even know this bench could adjust to be honest. I just saw that. Let me see if that makes it any Cause better. Because I think when we did it with Mark, we did it on neutral grip. Oh. Yeah, that'll be a little better. Like this? Although, it's really gonna be really hard to get out of here because you have to start so low. We can uh, load it to be really light in the pocket True. or that part of the pocket. Yeah, let's do that. I'm 
feels really good. Really, really good. I think I'm only gonna add a 25 to this. Huh? I'm just gonna try to do like perfect form. Cause I, I was thinking about putting it right there. So it's a little, like a little bit more tension in the lengthen. Whereas like you, as soon as you get past like that middle part, it's like just all oh, so hard. We can do that. Don't worry about locking out. Locking out's just tries. Don't worry about that. That felt good, like really good. What? So that felt really good. Yeah, I'm actually, like I like the stimulus of it to be honest. Yeah. As much as it because like, it feels, it feels a little bit awkward, I'm like, it's getting me really direct in the chest. I was gonna say, I feel like it's like, the perfect decline exercise. <laughs> right. I'm like, I was I was surprised because I don't it's I don't like the motion, but I can feel that the tension is going yeah. directly where it needs to go. Yeah. It's, awesome. it's like a love-hate relationship at this point. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so when you're getting ready for like stepping on stage and stuff, what I want you to do is I want you to spend almost all of your time focusing on a chest pump. That's probably what I would do is just push up. Exactly. Because what's gonna happen is like for guys like you and I chest is a weak point in our overall physique. Your, your back's gonna be great, your arms are gonna be great. So what you wanna do is you wanna drive as much blood into your chest as possible to make sure that when you step out there and you hit your side chest or like whatever else, it's like, they're not like, oh, the chest doesn't match up with the rest of the body. That was one of the mistakes that I made at my at my last show was like, I didn't really focus on any particular area. So it was like my chest appeared small next to like my arms. You don't want that. But like, it's been really uh, enlightening huh? doing, it's been really enlightening doing posing at the end of my workout because every time I do a chest day, my posing yeah. looks way better than <laughs> yeah. any other day. That's why um, every video that I have my red shorts on, it's that's when I hit chest is when I wear my red shorts. Yeah. They always all do good because yeah. I have a chest pump. <laughs> all right, now you guys are gonna see me throw in something that I've been doing more recently, but I have not done for a long period of time, so don't clown me on my form. But I'm doing dumbbell pullovers. Um, I know, like, maybe it's not the best exercise in the world, but, you know, I gotta have fun with things, try things out, and I've been enjoying them. I'm gonna progress them over time, see if I can get any benefit out of it. Maybe I don't, maybe I do, but keep your training novel. Have some fun in there. I'm gonna have to do a warm up with like the 50s to get the form down first. I, really, I think I, I think I got it. Why do you, do you prefer holding it like that? Because yeah, I, I, I feel like my it, fingers would. I mean, I, it hurts a little bit, but it's way more stable. So yeah. it's like I, I've tried doing the whole like, you know, I, like, I like the like cup. Oh, see, the reason I don't do that is because then one one arm's gonna be like a little bit like skewed, right? That's so the reason I, I do I, this, I would alternate between sets. Yeah. yeah, I like I I personally like this, but if you find something else that works better for you, then do that. I'm gonna try it. I just know because I've like broke this finger and messed them up on both hands. Right. So they're like they're awful. I heard one guy talking about this, saying that it really helped him develop his serratus better. And thing is, like we're getting like super lean, right? So like a serratus can be like kind of a cool look. Okay. So I'm like, you know what? I'll give it a go. <laughs> see if I see if I notice any difference. Yeah, that feels good. Was that right? 
Looks good. No need to bring it all the way up. There you go. Good. Come on. Come on. Good. Pull. 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 Good. Get a couple down here. Yep. Yep. Pull. Pull. Ten bodies. Good. It just destroyed starting, my wrist. Starting at 80s, your first time back to it, it is uh, it's pretty it's pretty crazy. Well, I used to do like 130. Right. But but starting back into it, like it was that? not controlled. Or, yeah. You okay? Yeah, it was like, uh, it was resting on my wrist. I always rested on my palm. My wrist barely touches it. I left too much space, so it was like angled. My right. palm wasn't touching it at all. Here, try this as your last sip. It's, it's so good. What is it? Try it. What is that? That's diet soda, diet orange soda and EAAs with a little bit of another supplement. Really? Yeah. That's really, really good. <laughs> I know. Because I like, the EAAs aren't bad themselves. Right. With the diet, that was so, like with the diet soda, it's cream. like, oh man, it's so good. Oh. See, this is how I make cutting way more enjoyable. <laughs> I, I get everything from my drinks. You know, you know what I recently found cravings. out? You know, uh, it's the white cheddar popcorn salt powder. Are you using it? How much of it are you using? A lot. This stuff's not zero calories. Yeah, it is. No, it's not. What is it? Okay, so if you look at the back. Is it one? No, it has no, it has no carbs, nothing. Doesn't matter. So if you look at the back of it, it'll say per like eighth of a teaspoon or like eighth of a, because what they can do is they can round down. That's what I was gonna say. So it's like so, at most four. But yeah, I thought four they could only for like, round down five. Yeah, four for how much though? But I, so, I only do it once a day. How much do you use? At most, like probably like eight, 10 servings. So maybe like 40 calories. Yeah, okay. So yeah, you're, you're getting a good amount there. You're getting at least 50 calories from that. So like you gotta be oh. careful with those things. Cause like but, those like zero calorie things, they'll add up. That's that's all I use though, is okay. that. Okay. And it is. As, as long as you can promise me that it's like 40, 50 calories. I'll, I'll measure it, it out away, one time. But then take it away from your other stuff so that because you have that's, some room. That's how diet Sprite is. It has a, a carb, but it's zero calorie. So like for example, what I do is I eat these like massive salads at night. And if you add the calories on the salad, it's like 120. But the thing is I use so much like low calorie sauces on it that I know those are gonna add up. So I add like 60 calories so onto those salads. Like I go up to like 180, yeah. yeah. So like just do, make sure you're doing that if you're ever gonna use like a lot of like those I always, zero I always things. overestimate, but I didn't check because I was like, oh, no carb, no fat, no protein. I was like, so it actually is zero it, calories. It, it messes with you. It messes with you. Because I, I check that. I think about it when I drink the Sprite and stuff. Well, the reason I figured that out was because one of my clients was sending me their, they're like, I make my own ranch, like from the ranch packets. And they're like, it's zero calories. And I'm like, how does it get a good flavor? And then I looked at it, it was like per like quarter teaspoon. And then it said how many servings was in there. And it was something like, like 60 or 70 servings in the packet. And I'm like, okay, so 60 times four, 60, yeah. 120, 180, that's, 240. You're looking at lot. almost 250 calories from yeah. that packet. It's insane. That's tough. So for this one, what you're gonna be doing is you're gonna be taking, you're gonna bring it out to the front. And all we're doing is we're just doing this shortened range of motion because we've already done so much in the way of lengthening our pecs out that we've already created a decent amount of damage. So this is just a good way to get a little bit of additional volume without incurring a lot of extra fatigue and damage. So all it's really doing is just getting a little bit more contraction, okay. but we'll finish off with this and then we'll do some posing. So are you seated all the way down? Yeah. Okay. No need to go that far. Just out to here and just pump. Keep the arms as straight as possible. <sighs> yep. Good. Yep. Squeeze it all through. Good. Squeeze. Good. 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 Come on. Come on. The thing I always find crazy about this one is it feels so easy at the start, and then all of a sudden you just can't do it anymore. <laughs> do you ever feel, this isn't like elbow, different elbow, feel it on like the top, like bicep. No. That's okay. why, that's the why you wanna make sure that you do it as straight as possible. Okay. Because you'll feel it less the straighter you can keep your arm. But if you're like this, 
then what's gonna happen is you're gonna get that tendon involved, that bicep, so you're just trying to take him. Well, even, that's what I'm saying, when I have it straight, I still feel, it just feels like it's being stretched. Yeah, which is normal. I mean, okay. you basically are, you still are getting some tension there. But then what you do is you just kind of like place emphasis on different parts of your hand, and you'll yeah. notice that it lessens or worsens based on where the tension is on your hand. I'm about to pump up on lateral raises. What? I'm about to get a pump with lateral raises. Why? Do you take any pump products right now? I took Rybolic, and then uh, I've never tried the pump caps, and they were uh, telling me to try them, but yeah. yeah. But I can't, I haven't gotten a pump in a while. At all? I just get vascular. Like, How much sodium are you consuming? A lot. I don't know the mix, but, cause that, uh, that popcorn salt's, salt's loaded with it, for one. And then my beef, and I, I pour like a horrendous amount of salt on my, my eggs and beef, and my tuna. I meant salmon. Usually I can get myself a pump even on low calories. Huh? Usually I can get myself a decent pump even on low calories, assuming I like hydrate properly and get my electrolytes in. Are you getting potassium or no? I'm not sure, I don't think so. Oh, there's your problem. The potassium? Yeah, you need more potassium. So like, what I do is before every workout, I consume no salt. So you don't have no salt with you? Go out and buy some. I, I probably will next time I go to the store. Get yourself like a solid teaspoon to teaspoon and a half of no salt a day, and you'll find that your pumps start to come back. Okay. Yeah, because that, that'll be the big one for you. Is because like, so what happens is sodium and potassium play off. So if you have like a lot of sodium, but no potassium, it's like, Cause that's, that's it, what it's, not, like, it's not going to allow the circulation. I I'm getting my like electrolyte stuff, but I, I have been getting no potassium. Yeah, so you're getting one electrolyte. Yeah. Is your magnesium also decent? Yeah. Okay, so keep the magnesium, sodium, and then now you just need the potassium, and you'll find that you start to get a little bit more vascular, a little bit more pumps. Like, it won't fix everything, but it'll help.